Hello, everyone. My name is Hope Weisler, and I'm excited to be sharing our work with you today. We have no relevant disclosures. The aim of this collaboration was to come up with a better way to identify patients with peripheral artery disease in the electronic health record. PAD affects about 10 million Americans and leads to heart attacks, amputations, other surgeries, and death. The care of PAD is complex and expensive, and furthermore is subject to several race, gender, and geography-related disparities. In order to improve the care of PAD, we need to be able to reliably and efficiently find patients who have it. We also need to be able to construct cohorts of patients who have PAD for further investigation. Currently, PAD identification in electronic health records generally uses administrative data, which often takes the form of diagnosis and procedure codes, as well as other structured data that has been created for billing rather than for clinical or research purposes. This approach either necessitates selecting a PAD subgroup, such as only patients with a specific type of PAD or only patients who have undergone certain procedures, or ends up yielding a cohort of patients of whom many don't actually have PAD. And we know this because we've tried it. And we actually ended up building an algorithm that uses administrative data through a lasso approach, which outperformed diagnosis codes alone. We decided to make use of patients' unstructured data using a natural language processing basis. This data came from clinical notes, which contain unstructured and semi-structured narrative texts, such as histories, physical exams, and lists of medications, procedures, and comorbidities. To do this, we took clinical notes from a cohort of patients whose PAD status had previously been adjudicated with the help from the LASSO model I mentioned earlier. We fed those notes into a hierarchical modification of a label embedding attentive model, which we called PADML. As you can see here, PADML in blue significantly outperformed the administrative data-based approach using a DeLong test. PADML also outperformed the administrative data-based approach on a precision recall curve. Finally, the words identified by PADML as most strongly associated with PAD make clinical sense. Atherectomy and stenting are endovascular interventions used to improve blood flow in patients who have PAD, and many of the rest of these terms are anatomic locations that are frequently affected by PAD. In conclusion, we showed that natural language processing outperformed an administrative data-based approach for PAD identification. We felt comfortable with the words identified by PADML as highly relevant, as they make sense from a clinical standpoint. We're now working on next steps, which are to work with other institutions to deploy PADML in their EHRs for validation and cohort construction purposes. Thank you so much for your time and attention.